Welcome to part 10. So we're concluding the, the tin work on the brackets and bits and pieces. Got some more blasting uh, to come up and uh, resurrection of the foot plates and uh, everything associated with the mud guard really. Same, pretty much the same as last time but different components. And, uh, and like I say, finally getting them blasted, get some paint on them to protect them and then uh, fitting up with the mud guard. So, uh, so yeah, so sit back and enjoy and uh, don't forget on this one we've got a uh, ride out on uh, the farm hall uh, H. So that could be quite interesting. Uh, so don't, uh, don't miss it. So uh, yeah, so in, sit back and enjoy and uh, we'll catch you up with you on the next one. Okay, I'm down in the bottom shed now and uh, where I've got my little three foot Edwards, uh, three foot, three foot, one, two, yes, yeah, it is three foot, uh, Edwards uh, press or folder. Uh, it's sort of a lot of stuff you do, it's pretty much useless because you can't get it in. Uh, but then there's a lot of small stuff when you're making guards and bits and pieces and like repair panels for that. <coughs> uh, yeah, and turn a you know a little piece up, uh, which says like bashing it about in the vice. So I've already just bent this one up, but just to show you the procedure, you just you just lift lift the bloody thing up like that, and then it will put it down, and you open it up just by pressing the lever down. Look, it opens the jaw up, and I can get the the thing out from the back. If you've got a bigger lip on, you've got to pull it this way. But because we're wider than what the press is, it'd be a bit of a jiggle to get it out. But uh, And that's the cue cap. Well, this is for the 9.6. Been ongoing restoration for a while. But uh, doing the corner post look. Yeah, fair bit going on there. And that bit. All done look. Just got to be welded in. Got that one, one on. All oh, sits in there for us. But uh, so yeah, a few more repairs to do in and around there. Same with that one. Look, it's got a few bits and pieces once doing. And uh, same with a bit for the window there. Much sorting out. But that's another story for another day, but just to show you sort of how deep you get into sort of sometimes. Uh, I mean, this was the worst part of the tractor. I mean, the rest of the tractor was all mechanical and, and it's all gone together. Uh, another piece there, look. And then uh, I've already cut the bit out this side to, uh, I think I've got a bit made somewhere, but uh, but I've been sort of contemplating what I'm going to do with this, so I may have to cut it out and weld a piece in there. And the trouble is with these jobs, like you start thinking, oh, I'll just put a little patch on there, but then when you cut it, there's another bit behind that and another bit behind that until you get to a point where you think, bloody hell, you know, and, you, and you, you're days and days and weeks and weeks into it, and then you sort of get a bit fed up and bored of it, and uh, you need to start something else to uh, sort of get your head around. Uh, uh, you know, it's again like, but same as on that side, look, all little bits. So yeah, so this is the grip blasting shed, and uh, winter time ain't, to get, ain't the time to do grip blasting, but I am, uh, I've got a few things I need to blast, and uh, one is the rear, the rear wings from my Model A, my pickup truck, which is on the ramp and uh, another one in behind there and then all the smaller bits of foot plates and bits and pieces for the strap that we're doing now so uh, I'm going to have a clear up in here so by as I can get back in because it is a nice sunny day today and uh, hopefully by this afternoon I might have better have a little go and uh, get some bits done and get uh, some of that pro weld uh, sprayed on stop them rusting and uh, yeah make a good job so uh, I'll crack on and uh, I'll bring you back later
So this is the foot plate bracket that's broken. And I've just welded the piece on it. I can't get hold of it, it's pretty hot. And, uh, and the bit is there, look. And I've just got to drill the uh, three holes in. And I've put them back to back so I get the locations right. And it's already got half a hole in there. So, uh, just a bit of three mil plate, really. But, uh, just wants dressing up. But it'll, uh, obviously, the left and right. And, th and this is the bit uh, that fastens on the bit that I call the foot plate stay. And uh, I'm going to find it. There they are. These are the foot plate stays that run from the axle. Right, so that's the foot plate stay that bolts into the middle of the hub on the brackets which are now down to be grip blasted in brackets like that run right through and then this is the stay that one's warm that one's warm that's it that one's warm and uh they're there Now this is the wrong hand for this, it's got to be facing the other way, it's the one I've just done, but I don't think it's a bit warm. But you can see what I'm saying, like that bolt's on there, and then the foot plate, the, uh, foot plate will sit on, on the bit I've got hold of. But it'll be on the other side of that bracket, because that bracket faces to the inside of the wheel, and then the foot plate goes the other way. But, uh, but you sort of see where, where I'm running at. Anyway, save the, save the bracket, just weld a bit on it, grind it off, it'll be sound. Catch you on the next one. Okay, so this is the bracket finished. Got the three holes in it, look. It's welded up and grounded off and did look. It'll all uh, look like, part, like it should be. And uh, when you pack it up to that one, you'll see through there from the other side. All the holes line up, look. So uh, left and right hand, so that's sort that job out, another one off the list. Okay, so we're having another day blasting today, got the two wing tops done, Stay, stays and uh, the wing bracket there, bulkhead bracket, the two castings to hold the uh, tin work and gubbing this together and the U-bolts and uh, while I'm in here I took the opportunity to uh, do the two rear mud guards for my Model A as well just give them a good clean up so I can get in and repair them and, and uh, sort of get them ready for uh, putting on because uh, my ones are all but broken half so yeah I'm having a good day to be fair Okay, well we're getting caught up with some of the painting. Getting all the oxide, oxide on so we can uh, so we can get some of this stuff put back together. Bits everywhere look, no matter where you look, I've got something red. So yeah, we've uh, got to set to now and repair these here floor plates. Uh, cut the rubbish out and so forth and get it organised. And uh, as soon as we get the floor plates sorted, we uh, we can then move on and start to 
start the riveting job. Okay, catch you later. Right, so on that little rolled edge, she's split, as you can see. Now, very tender. So the idea is, I'm going to drop the little bit of round rod in there. But it just, just nicely sits down in that groove, look. Same that end. It just sits in that groove. And uh, then I've got so much to weld onto from the other side, which will uh, soak up some of the heat and uh, not burn away the, the tender tin. Uh, so we'll have a go at that, see if that will repair that. And, uh, and that'll be another little, little job done. So you can see what I'm doing now, look. The bit of steel, the round bars, lays in the groove. Now I'm going to do now just squish that edge down. And uh, yeah, weld it along. Hopefully it'll come good. If it don't, well, we might end up scrapping it, but I'm uh, hoping to save it. So I've got a few holes in there. So I'll clamp it down on my trusty piece of aluminium and, uh, and get sorted there. Welded that one up, done it with a MIG. Turned the MIG right down, done it with a MIG. It ain't gone too bad, to be fair. So we'll crack on. Okay, so that's that hole filled up. Once that's painted over, well, that, what it really wants, it wants glass in there, just to take the shine off of them bits. And then when you paint it, you wouldn't hardly see any difference. That's the, the rolled edge all put back on. You can see. And I'll just flip it over. And that's the bit on the side where it's on the aluminium. Well, I'll leave that just for strength because there's no need to polish it off. It's underneath. My rod is underneath. Just put a backbone in there, use as a filler strip. And as you can see, it's as good and straight as it'll be for a foot plate. Same as that edge. And I think once that's painted and you look at it, you know. You would never notice it, to be fair. So I'm going to carry on, do a few bits. Got a little tiny pinhole or two in there, which just shows it's getting on a bit on the thin side, and uh, that one in there. And I'll just touch them up, and then we'll have a look at this big bit. But I would say uh, what we'll do there is we'll cut a piece out and you know and put a fresh bit in. Uh, and plus I've got to get that edge all the way around there, but. Uh, which would be a bit of a challenge. But anyway, uh, we're getting there. We'll, we'll keep, keep doing food a little bit. We'll have this one done by the end of the day. Okay, so we've done a few spots here and there. <coughs> and uh, now we've got to attend this bit at the back here. So you see I've got a bit of a rough chalk line there. <coughs> and what I've done, is that I just made that bit. I made it out of a bit of tin. Well, I cut it out of there, look. And uh, so when I'm finished, it's got the pits in it the same as the rest of it. If we put a new bit of plate in there, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. So uh, I've just got to cut the floor plate out now so I can weld that in. <clears throat> and uh, you know, just a little square to put in there, but that's uh, just threshed it out with a chisel on the vice. But that should come good. Catch you on the next. Right, so we've just fabricated a piece of tin there. Look, just put the bend in to correspond with that. Just got to make a little piece to bridge that gap out a bit, and then when my underbar fits in here, there's two holes here, 
And once it's in here, I'm going to sit in there. That's why I left that hole purposely, so I could pick up and get it in the right place. So all that remains then is just to weld that up. And, uh, and then when I get it welded and ground off, along with all the other bits, I'll, uh, I will put some, a little bit in there. I'll probably fill that one up. Might cut it out, see when I get to it. But yeah, and when I get done, like I say, I'll just nip up there and I'll blast it. Just so as it uh, makes it the same colour as the rest of it and uh, give it a good good bonding so as the paint will stick. Because if you put paint on there, it just comes straight off because we're too shiny. And uh, and when it's blasted, I think when you look at it, you'll be surprised at how, how good that's come. Uh, but yeah, so I'll crack on. Right, so I decided to cut them bits out there, and that one, and then uh, weld a couple of bits in, and then when that's done, it's pretty much done. I'm quite chuffed with that, it's uh, probably the better one of the two, but uh, at least that's given me... Uh, Sort of a, a trial run as to set about the other one, which has just got a bit more missing on it. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it's looking good. I'll get them blasted, just the, the bits that I've done, and then uh, I think you'll find it will look okay. Okay, and so just a trial run. I bolted the bottom plate on and the mounting plate for the mud guard at the back there, look, for the hang on to go on. Everything sits in there pretty much as you would expect it to fit. And there she is, all bolted up, everything lines up. So that can only be good. So uh, that one's ready for just blasting now to finish off to blend all the bits in. And uh, quite pleased with that. So on to the next one. Okay, so I've got the rubbish cut out and uh, made my new bit of plate. Just wants welding in. Just got a bit of a crack in that bit there. Give him a little patch there. And welded a couple of cracks up there. But all in all, this plate across the front here is a lot better than the other one. In fact, this it's got a good good floor all, all together. It's got a bit longer patch in there, but I'll do the same trick as I did with the other one and uh, put me a little bit of round bar in. And uh, in fact, I. I made it of a round bar. The shape of the uh, of the plate, so I could uh, transfer left from right to get the radiuses the same. And uh, I should use that same bar in underneath there, like did the other side. It uh, sit in the groove nicely, and uh, uh, it, it does a good job. When you look down that one, like it's got a nice edge now, all down here. Look where the bar is underneath, and uh, so it's got a bit of strong back in there, stiffens the edge up. So uh, they look look about the same, don't they? So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I just could set to and weld it all up now. Okay then, so we finally oh. got a uh, pair of foot plates finished. Uh, other than just blasting them to uh, clean the uh, the new bits up, if you like, and all the bright bits, so it gives the paint a nice key. But uh, I have got to drill them holes. I've got three holes there I need to drill out because they're the three that's missing, like them three there. So I've just got to drill them out, and then I'm going to make a uh, 
a punch set to put in the fly press so by as I can just get the raised piece you know, for your grip for your boot and, uh, and then that would be pretty much all sorted. I've drilled the holes for the uh, <coughs> for the, uh, yeah, the angle iron stiffen that's underneath that red oxide bit that runs underneath there look fastened up there with two bolts the same as I had to put the hole in that one So yeah, I'm uh, again. I'm quite pleased with them. It's another job done and out of the way, and uh, I can pretty much start assembling one wing now because all my stuff's on there, all been painted. So all the bits are in, and uh, yeah, pretty much ready to go. I think. I'll have a look round in the morning. It's, uh, I know it's about half past nine, quarter ten at the minute. So I'll have a look round in the morning and, uh, and just make sure I've, oh, I've, I've missed one thing out. I've got another hole to where that big hole is. I've got the grease nipple hole to put in. And it's that one there, look. And that's so you can grease your grease nipple on your trumpet housing for your uh, roller bearing from inside the tractor. So you ain't got to try and get between the wheel and the and the uh, yeah the mud guard. So uh, still a bit awkward to get at, even though it's there. But uh, so yeah, we've just got that one hole to do for that. We'll have to put that plate back on and mark it out. And then, uh, other than that, I think everything's sort of ready to go. I don't need to put plates to start assembling the mug yard. Uh, you know, get the wing top on and uh, his wing braces and bits and pieces. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, good day. Okay, well this one's uh, for 1939 Panama H. So I'll just turn the petrol on, we'll see how she performs. We'll get it to go, we'll go for a ride. I did put an electric start on this one, uh, one because I could, and uh, for two, it, uh, if you didn't catch the trout quite right, it would have to look bugger to start, but uh, mostly it would start good, and the one day when you was really in and you needed it, you could not get the bloody thing to go, so I opted out for electric starter. Uh, so we'll give it a go. <laughs> She was charging up a bit anyway, she made it, so uh, we'll go for a ride.
But you didn't think I was going to leave you behind, did you? Let's have a look. So, let's have a look around it from here before we move off. So, she's 39. See how far the axle sticks out. And I caught the corner of the shed here getting out. And, uh, see, that one's the same look. I'll put the electric pack on, just so it's go easier starting it. Especially when the pressing and doing and you know it's warm. You just press that button and it nearly always goes every time. On the street there's not these old farm holes. But when you're thinking 39, it's fairly advanced really because it's got over a valve engine in it. Whereas most people still using the side uh, what's the name? Yes, I had valve engines. I suppose John Deere was there, fairly advanced in one way. They was overhead valve, but because they are stuck to the bloody stationary type engine, you know, with twin cylinders on their side. But, uh, right. Let's go for a, a little jolly. different to the old Ford, you sit right up in the air in one of these, you can see when you see the old films, the old boy's got the army coats on, you pretty well need it stuck right up here when you're tearing about. We'll get her out here and we'll go up the road and uh, it's got a fair turn of speed this one has. Still running on petrol, but uh, we should be able to, be able to put it on power from the time we get to the road. Just got to get round for a bit of water about as well. Like I say, how much pretty rain we've had. She never had a draw bar and I found this draw bar into one of the sails. And like I say, she had a peak clipper on all its life. And uh, from a local contractor. Right, and here we go. Bit of a blind one out here. Somebody had picked the route if I'm wrong. No, yeah, there we go.
smell sweet when you get your foot out on the old paraffin. Still in top gear, look. Street old things, really. Lovely day, sun shining, what more could you want? Oops, that changed gear now, it's a bit tricky here. Bloody harsh, I'm sticking out, so I'm going to mow some of us up. That's your road run. Nice little drive. He's on the uh, old bonnet always has a sort of ticks over a bit irregular but it just increases the rev slightly and uh, she says it's pretty good. why this wheel's right tight in to the mudguard and uh, well I, brought, I pulled the one in just to do the you know put the beat trailer on it but uh, it was what's name uh, to, be, to be right it's got to go the other way around but I just slid it back in to uh, so I could use it and also so I'd get the bit of thing in the shed I don't know what I'll do when I get the beat drill on it I'll start find a fresh shed for it but anyway that's your road run now look, the temperature just, uh, can we see that? Yeah, just starting to come up slightly. We've got the old thing is good. And the old pressure gauge, can we see that one? I've got a little bit of sun in there. And it's right across the gauge, you can't see it, so... Uh, so yeah, so that's it then for this one. 